let's make a full screen music player this is just like a conventional music player that can actually play music skip to the next music or return back to the previous music let's get started This music player is responsible on mobile devices for all screen. We can actually play music, skip to the next track, stop a music and also go back to the previous track. Right now, let's build this. Before you proceed, go down to the description and you will see a link that will take you to the GitHub repository and you can grab this Tata template and put that on your machine and open that on Visual Studio Code and you will see exactly this. Let's have a general container that is going to cover everything and then give this app a name. Beneath that, let's put in the class wrapper for image inside that we have to target the audio image and then we add an image attribute there or image tag then we paste in the url of the image then we give this a title let's say image cover Let's give it a heading to with a class of audio title. And inside there, we have the title of audio. One more is the heading six, which is gonna have a class of audio singer. Then we have a singer name. Beneath the image, we have the progress bar. And inside our progress bar, we have the progress itself. The progress is a container that is going to contain the progress bar and also the progress head. So this is audio progress. And um, let's bring in the progress bar. Also the progress head. The progress bar is the white line that's move, that is moving whenever the music is being played. And the progress head is the rounded circle thing that covers the progress bar edge. Let's add the current time, which is the current uh, time the music is being played. And then we have one more, the duration of the music. This is the total time of the music. So these are like double zeros, not just one. Let's proceed to the buttons. We have audio buttons inside there. We're going to have some couple of buttons and we're making use of only three buttons. So let me just go ahead and do this quickly. So we have three buttons. The first one is going to is going to have a class of button. And this one is going to have a subclass of skip back. Then we are going to we, uh, we are going to add a font or some type or better say a font or some icon doing that is very simple we have an icon with a class of fa solid fa backward step so when you type those classes and just see the tab it's going to add that inside this one we have um, fa fa solid then fa play and the last one, FA solid, FA forward. Then we forgot to add these uh, classes. Let's go ahead and do that. So we have a general button class. Then for this one, this is play, not skip. Then for this one, we have a class of button. And then we have a uh, skip forward. This is just it for the HTML and the next thing is to go over to the style.css and then 
we can style this application also before we proceed i would like us to install what is called the live server just go ahead and install this because this is what we're going to use to preview this application sorry to preview the index file on real time on the bottom right end of your screen you should definitely see go live it's because i have clicked on go live that's why you can only see the port but right here you can see my url is making use of a local host of 5500 ports i'm going to close this index.html file inside this style.css i'm going to import a font and then i'm going to target body and also all the html tags and give the margin of zero a padding of zero then we can make use of this font family we just uh, imported which is the roboto then if we don't have roboto in the font family we should just fall back to sans serif then we have that bluish background color we can give this a background of hash 2d 24 and 64 then we have a height of 100% and a width of 100%. Then we can just give it an overflow of hidden because we don't want the body to like extend more than the screen size of the browser. Then we have a color of FA, FA, FA. Then we disable all the user selects, which means we don't want anyone to highlight that. So that's kind of making sense now. So for the image, it's kind of uh, pretty much zoomed. We just want image to be height of 100% in order to fit to the container, which we're going to size when we get to the image, I think the audio image wrapper. Then we have the audio container, which is the overall container. Let's give it a height of 100 view height, a display of flex i want everything to be vertically positioned and then we have to align it to the center to push it to the center and then also justify the content with space around this is going to uh, make it to space out and uh, be horizontally aligned which is perfect then for the audio image which is going to now control the image size Let's give it a width of 200 pixels, a height of 200 pixels as well. That will definitely reduce the image size. Because we added a space around, you could see all this has nice spacing and perfectly spaced out. Then for the title itself, I want the text uh, to be uppercase because right now we have a capitalized text, then I have to give it a font size of font uh, 1.2 gram. Then for the image wrapper, we wanna display it flex. So why I'm displaying this flex is the fact that, you know, we don't only have the image inside the audio image wrapper, we do have the title and also the singer. So I want all these to be aligned to the center and also perfectly aligned horizontally. Flex direction of column and then overflow of hidden as well as uh, for now, I'm going to give this a cursor pointer. We don't actually need that overflow. This will make this to have a cursor pointer whenever we enter inside this audio image wrapper. I want that image to be rounded. I'm going to give take border radius of 100%. And then beneath that, give it a, a padding of, that is supposed to be a padding of 10 pixels. And then, uh, sorry for that, text align everything to the center. So that was supposed to give this a round shape unless we spelled something wrong on the class itself. 
So this is audio image. Mm. So that was that was uh that's actually hundred percent rounded right now. For the fact that we didn't round this image, that's why we can actually like get that done. So let's hurry up and do that. Let's copy the same border it use and give it a hundred percent. So this should make it hundred percent. The box on this surface is already round. Uh, we can also add an overflow hidden so we can realize why it's important now. Right now, I want to style the title and also the singer name. Let's give it a, a little bit of margin top of one rem, then give it a font size of one point five rem. It occurred to me that I made a little mistake while typing Roboto here. Make sure you add its E0, sorry, e an O in front of the T, not E0. Then the heading 6 itself is going to have a font size of 0 0.9 rem, margin top of 0 0.5 rem. We have a font weight of 400 and a color of BC, BC, and BC. Then we can style the audio progress. Display everything, display it as a grid. Uh, target the uh, grid and give it a grid template columns. I want to repeat everything to then give it a width of 80%. Let's let's try 80%. Right now you can notice we do have a grid and because we are repeating these two, we have the progress and then the times. If we check closely here, you could, you could see we have the progress and the time. It's repeating these two. We don't want it to be that way, which is very simple for us to fix. I'm going to target the progress itself. I want the progress to make use of the full width. First off, I want to give it a background color of uh, 3D, 3A, and 4B. Let's save that. You could see the progress right here. Then at the top there, I want to give it a grid, color, grid column. I want it to make use of the whole width. When I use a one of a negative one, it's going to make use of that. And then we can give it a height of 0.4 rem so that we can actually see that. Then give it a margin bottom of 0.8 rem. We have a cursor pointer as well. Then we have uh, to text align every. We don't actually need these, but we can give it a position of relative because the head itself is going to be uh, absolute. For the progress head, I'm going to target that is up. We have the head. Give it a position of absolute. background color of ash f a f a f a height of 1.2 rem same with the width and then we have to give it a top of zero left of zero i want this to be perfectly positioned in the center we use translate of negative 50% for the x-axis and negative 32% for the y-axis. We have a border reduce of 100% because we want it to be like a circle. Then we can bring it to the front. We have a z-index of 2, a box shadow of 0, 0, 0, 3 pixels, bf. Eight. So this is triple A BF eight. Let's save that, and you could see uh, we have that nice looking uh, progress head. For the progress bar, so, sorry for the current time. Uh, we have the current time and also the duration. But let's give the current time a text align of left 
and then a margin left of 0 0.5 frame. Then we have for the duration itself, a text align of end. We can actually use end or right. Then we have margin right of 0 0.5 frame. Let's save that and space it out uh, perfectly. Then the last thing remaining for us to start is the buttons, but let's go ahead and correct this before we proceed. I'm going to scroll down here. This is actually forward. And let's save that. That should definitely uh, fix this. Yeah, so we have the buttons showing perfectly. I'm going to target the audio buttons give it a width of 300 pixels display as inline flex align all the items to the center justify the content to with a space between and that will definitely space all these buttons out each of these is going to have a button class. Of course, we did add all those class in the HTML. So we have the button here, button here, and also at the last one. Generally, all the buttons are going to have a cursor pointer. We have a border of on set because it's a button. We don't want those box shadow or the default um, HTML button styling. Then let's give it a background color of nothing and then give it a font size of 1.4 and a color of FAFAFA, -A, a display of inline flex, align all the items as well to the center, justify content as well to center. Then for the play button, it's going to be like a special button. In order for us to do that, we have to uh, use the play class. Let's give this a background of linear gradients. We have to write, and then we can specify the colors. So what, I, what I'm simply doing here is from the left to the right, we just want the field to occupy by itself without uh, stressing it by ourselves. Then we have 7854FB. Then we text align everything to the center, give it a border radius of 100%. And then for the padding itself, I want a uh, pattern one rim top and bottom. And also for the left and right, 1.2 rem or 1.1 rem. So that's it for the design. And um, the button is actually uh, really nice as well. So maybe use 1.2. Okay, we already have the button zoomed in off. So that's it for the design. Let's go over to the JavaScript aspect and make sure that whenever we click on play, we can actually play a song. And also whenever we click on skip and also the skip next and also skip back if you have actually watched this far guys please hit that like button and let's proceed so to play a song we have to select the play button and the way we can do that is to use the documents dot query selector i want to select it by the class which is dot play We can also select the skip uh, forward button, which is documents. Um, so I just want to make sure everything is spelled correctly. Then we can select it uh, with the class, which is skip forward. Instead of us to be repeating the word const, we can actually get rid of these and then can make use of comma and still break this down and it's still going to work perfectly then to make things more simpler i just want to get rid of that button because we just have only skip forward we also have skip back
Then we do have the tracks. I'm just going to piece, gonna piece that down. Um, it's actually from the GitHub repository. It's there for you. And I'll also make a correction here. So this is documents, not document. Beneath these tracks, we're going to create some initial. I call them initial um, state, or uh, let's say initial values, because we are not dealing with state right here. Although they are state in nature. We have audio, let's set that to null. Then we have the power width, let's set that to null as well. We have the, I don't know why I'm making these uh, mistakes. We have the duration, let's set that to null as well. So I think uh, the, the way I do type down states is usually an, an object matter manner. So that's why I'm getting used to putting the semicolon. I mean, colons, not semicolons. So we have the current time, which is null as well. We have is timer playing, which is false. And then um, we have the current track index, which is zero. And then we have the current track, which is from, which is gonna come from the tracks. So let me just quickly explain this. The audio itself is going to be the audio uh, class, the JavaScript audio class. Then we have the power width. We are going to use that to calculate the, the width in pixels for this uh, width. Then we have the duration, the total duration of the time, and also the current time, which is definitely this one. Then we have the is timer playing, which, which we are going to use to know whether we clicked on the play or whether maybe we clicked on the stop. Then lastly, sorry, not lastly, we have the current index. The current index is track index is going to help us to actually skip through our music. Let's say we get to the last one, then we can still skip back to the first one, which is zero. Then the current track is exactly the first element from our array of tracks. Let's go ahead and set initial state values. This is initial. Then for the audio, we have to set this to new audio, the audio objects. For the source itself, we have to set it to the current track dot source, which is the source of the music. Let's proceed to make uh, more query selectors for our elements. I'm going to select for the image itself, which is documents dot query selector. Uh, I want us to see this clearly. Then I'm going to target the image class. Then beneath here, I'm going to correct this to track. Please do make sure you do correct that and also make sure you correct the ones that we mistakenly type down at the top. So this is actually current track. Let me uh, query selector the title and also the singer. So we have the audio title class. And also we have the singer. For now, that's okay. Underneath here, I'm going to uh, give the image a source and that is going to come from the current track dot cover and then we have the title which uh, we are going to change the inner text to current track dot name also we have the singer dot inner text which is the current uh, track I think this is current track then we have the current track 
dot artist. So what we simply did here was to assign the uh, initial state values to our initial values over here. So I usually use state. That's probably because I'm used to React. And please do make sure you give this a source, not SER. When we proceed to save, we get the first music selected and also we get the uh, container uh, edited, which means the, the image is edited to the first image, the title to the first title, also the artist to the first artist. And when we check uh, closely here, we can see we have the artist one, the first title and also the first cover. Let's proceed to play music and to do that, we can use the play button and then we add an event listener. Then this event listener is going to listen for a click event. Inside the callback, we just want to uh, check if the audio is currently playing. And the way we check that is to use the audio.post. So if it is paused or stopped, we proceed to play. Then once we play the music, we have to set the timer playing to true because we are going to use this to uh, do some other things. That's why we have to set that to true. And then on the else, we have to pause the music. That means whenever it is playing, the first one was when it's not, uh, when it's not playing. So if it is currently playing, we have to pause that music and also set this to false. Let's proceed to save and click on the play button. And definitely that will stop because right here we also check the fact that whenever it's uh, currently playing, which is the else, we should actually pause the music. So right now, let's go ahead and make sure we can change the sign icon from the play to the pause and also make sure we can get the data that we animate our progress bars. We have to make use of the audio dot on time updates so this updates every milliseconds of the time that the song is being played we can check for the case of is timer playing so if timer is playing we have to change this icon then let's go ahead and select that icon is up i'm just going to duplicate this down and then put this as a comma and I'm going to change this class to FA play. You can give it a play icon. And down here, I want to change this play icon. Whenever the song is playing, we we'll just want to uh, add a class list of. First, we have to remove the play class list, I mean, FA play. And then we can add a class list. of FA pause. And if in the case is paused, we just have to like interchange that. So we add a play and down here we add the pause. If we save this and play this now, it's going to change this from the play button to the pause button. Definitely working as we thought. Let's proceed to animate this uh, progress by whenever our music is playing, we just want these things to move together with the track. I'm going to select the containers. The first one is the progress container, which is uh, to select that directly. I'm just gonna copy that down and copy that one more time. And the first one there is a progress bar. The second one is the progress head. Inside here, we have to make use of the progress bar. Why here we have to make use of the progress head. We always have to check if we do have an audio duration. If we do have an audio duration, we want to convert the current time and also the total time. We want to use that and compute the percentage of this uh, width of the progress bar. 
And to do that, we use 100. We're going to divide 100 with the audio duration. And then we multiply it with the current time, which is the audio.current time. I'm going to assign that to a variable for a bar width. This bar width is already declared at the top. If we do have that, we want to wrap everything here into it. Right now, let me go, just go ahead and console out that value because I want to see, I want you to see the value being animated or being uh, printed out on every millisecond. We have the bar width. I'm going to play the music now. So that's actually printing out that value in real time. So with the help of the on time update, it's going to print out or compute our things in real time for us. So we have the percentage now and let's use that to animate the progress bar. I'm just going to close all this and over here, I'm going to target the progress bar and then we can use tie.width. We set that to the bar width. And do not forget to add percentage in front of this. So this is going to animate the width for us. If you can recall, we do have the progress head, but the progress head happened to be a an absolute uh, container. So we have the progress head, the style, dot set property. I want to set it, uh, set the left. We also want to animate that with the bar width. And in front of that, you add the percentage. So before we go ahead to play that, let's come over to our CSS and we have to add the uh, progress bar. We're just going to have a background color of white. And then we have a height of 100%, a position of relative and width of, uh, let me just give it a 100% width and then give it a border radius of 0.8 rem. So by default, uh, that should actually be a 100% width, but I'm going to set this to 0%. That's actually animating together with the um, the progress head, I mean. So we are almost done with the tutorial. Um, the next thing we have to do is to make sure we change this text. We display the start time and also the end time. Before we uh, query select the HTML classes, let's go ahead and compute uh, the uh, current time and also the end time. I'm going to quickly create a variable called duration in minutes which is going to uh, round this to the nearest whole number. And then we use the audio duration divided by 60. We also calculate the seconds, the duration in seconds, which is going to round it to the nearest number. But in this case, we just want to uh, minus the duration in minutes. We have to calculate the current minute as well. The current minute is going to be calculated with the uh, math floor, which is going to run it to the nearest whole number. Um, but this time around, we are using the current time. And we divide that by 60. And to get the current seconds, we just have to minus the current minutes. So these are just going to be like single values, but we want a case that if it's less than 10, we want to add zero in front of that. So let's quickly do that. We have to check the duration in minutes. It's less than 10. We just uh, set the duration in minute to zero plus the current minute, which is the duration in minute. The same thing for the seconds. If it's less than 10, we just have to change it and append that. Uh, the next one is the current minute. If it's less than 10 as well, we change uh, the current minute and concave zero in front of it as well. And the last one, current seconds.
So we have to edit the duration variable and then we set that to the current minute and then we concate the duration in seconds as well. So this is the total minutes and also the total seconds. Then for the current time, we have to set it to the current minute plus the current seconds. To make sure it's, it's gonna be displayed here whenever we play our music, we have to query select the current times. So we have the current uh, current time HTML, which is uh, documents or query selector dot current time. We have one more, which is the duration HTML, and we have to change this to duration. So why I use the HTML is because I don't want it to interfere with our local state variables. Coming down here, we can now target the current time HTML dot inner text. We set that to the current time. Also the duration HTML dot inner text. We set that to the duration. That is actually working perfectly, but uh, I kind of noticed that we used division here. So this is supposed to be a multiplication, not a division. So that makes the times uh, to be perfectly uh, working well. So we are almost done. And the next thing we have to do is to work on these uh, skip buttons. Whenever we click on this and this, you want to skip forward or skip backward. Above this on time updates, I want to make use of the skip forward dot add event listener and sure you know that it's a click event. Inside here, I want to check the current track index, which is definitely a zero, a zero index. So I want to check if it is less than the tracks length minus one. If it is less than that, we just want to increase that uh, current track index. And then in the case that we have uh, the current track index equals to this uh, length tracks dot length minus one, we just wanna reset that current track index back to zero. And uh, we have to update the current track, which is going to be uh, the tracks. And then we can add the current track index to it. So once that is done, we have to change the source to this uh, current track and also the, the, the details. You can just come up here and copy exactly all these and then you can just come down here and paste that. So this is going to skip to the next music, but let's say if we are currently playing the music and uh, let's say the progress of this that music was actually here, the progress is going to still be there. So in order to avoid that, we have to reset all those I can just come down here and copy this and come over here and paste that beneath here. So what I want to do is to reset the bar width. We don't have, okay, we can reset the bar width. So let's stick to uh, using this directly. Reset the bar width to zero. Then we can reset the current time HTML. Reset it to zero as well as the duration HTML and reset that to zero. We also have to change the audio current time and set that to zero as well, and also the audio source. Then we can set it to the current track dot source. Then if we actually uh, we are playing the music previously before we skipped, we want to continue playing that music. So we use the set timeout. So the set timeout is a callback. So what it's gonna do is to wait for just 300 milliseconds. Then it's going to check if the timer was initially playing. And if that's the case, we want to play that audio. Or else we just wanna stay where we are, which is pause the audio.
So let's save that. If we go ahead to click on this, it's not going to work. The reason is because we are using a const keyword in this track, and that's going to lead me to change this to this, and then close this properly. If we save this and come back and click on this and next, you see automatically it's going to take us to the next track. And whenever we get to the last one, which is Dream Big, bring us, it brings us back to this uh, first one, which is the index at zero. Same thing we did for the skip button is the same thing we are going to do for the back button or the skip back button, except the fact that we are going to decrement the count. So quickly down here, I'm going to paste that. And inside here, I'm checking for the case of, of these um, greater than zero. So if it is greater than zero, we just want to decrement that count. Then if if it is now, let's say, equals to zero, I just want the current track in this to be this dot tracks, dot tracks, dot length, uh, negative one, which is the total count of the tracks. And don't forget to change this to skip back. Let's go ahead and click on the back button. And right now you could see we can skip back. So whenever it is now, let's say, uh, zero or less than zero, it's going to automatically set it to the highest value of the counts, which is the total count of the tracks. Let's proceed to work on the progress bar container. I want a situation whereby when we click on this, we have to animate this progress head and also the progress bar to that specific place. So the way we can do that is to target the progress bar container dot add event listener. And I want in such a way that when we click on it, can then perform some actions. The first thing first is to get the position that we just clicked. So to get that position, we use the x dot pitch x. So this x is going to be coming from here. And then we get our maximum duration, which is going to be the audio duration. So to get from uh, our progress container to any position, we have to use the pitch X and then minus the offset left of this progress bar container. So this is going to make it in such a way that we are going to now make use of the numbers from just here to any place we just clicked on. Let's proceed to convert that to a percentage. And to do that, we divide, uh, we multiply the position with 100 and then divide it with the progress bar width, the progress bar container width, which is the offset width. I'm just going to copy these down. And then right here, I'm going to change this to offset width. And we want in such a way that if the percentage is greater than 100, we just want to set it uh, to 100 rather than exceed that value. And also if the percentage is less than zero, we want to set the percentage to zero. Although that there's like, like let's say 99% impossibility for that to happen because we can hardly click here for this to respond. We are just targeting the progress bar container. So once that is done, we are, we are done with the calculation. We can now update our bar width, which is going to be the percentage and then we concate percentage in front of it. Right now, let's go ahead and update the progress bar and also the uh, progress bar head. We just use the bar width and update that. And if I click on any of these, that should definitely move it. And I think that shouldn't work because we are already using a percentage here. So uh, that would definitely make sense if I can get rid of this percentage and save that. So this time around, I think it should definitely take effect. And also we should get rid of this percentage so that the bar head, progress bar head can also move together with the progress bar. So right now we have this working perfectly. But one more thing remaining is the fact that when we click on this, we also want the current time of the music to be updated to that particular percentage. So to do that quickly, we just update the audio.current time which we are going to set to uh, 
we are going to use the mass duration, then multiply it by the percentage, and then divide it by 100. So let's go ahead and play this music. And if I click on this and play, So you can see with that, we are able to update the current time of the song and the song plays wherever we click. So that's it on how to build a full screen music player with JavaScript, HTML and CSS. Feel free to hit that like button and also the subscribe button and let's meet on our next tutorial. Take care and bye.